Hello everyone, we're going to talk today about securing the future of Ingress Nginx, everyone's favorite uh, Ingress controller. My name is James Strong, I'm a solutions architect at Isovalent with Cisco. I'm a maintainer of Ingress Nginx, this is just my default <laughs> page, so I just put that on there. Um, author of Networking Kubernetes, I uh, got a video on the same, and um, I, it's really hard to ship my Gimli axe with me, so you get just me. Yeah, my name is Marco Ebert. Um, I'm a site, re re site reliability engineer at Transform, working in and with open source for like more than 10 years now. I started my journey with Kubernetes in 2016, and since November 2023, I'm also a maintainer of Ingress Nginx. In my free time, I enjoy bouldering and mountain biking. So, when we talk with lots of folks around some of the issues that Ingress Nginx has had in the past. Um, one of the things that come up is community support. Um, we have three maintainers, well, two and a half, one's in China and works for a competing company. Um, but there's, some, there's always conversations around um, the project and its supportability. And I just want to let folks know that sometimes we have lots of conversations in the background. So if it takes you takes us three to four months to you know, accept your PR or accept your feature, because um, we're having conversations that sometimes are very difficult to have. And um, just, you know, again, want to make, make the community aware that uh, we are continuing this project. Um, hello, high water. <laughs> we're going to talk today about some of the changes in um, 112. We made some significant security changes in 112. And of course, um, continuing the theme from Paris, we're going to talk about Ingress Nginx to Gateway API and our future plans with that. Yeah, and as James already noted right now, there are some changes to the default values of some security relevant configuration options. The first of them is um, the enable annotation validation option. So with this being turned on and creating an ingress resource with a possibly um, hundreds of, of annotations. Yeah, with a possibly invalid annotation inside this ingress resource, um, this ingress will now be rejected from recreation. Um, the same applies at runtime, so if you already have ingress resources with invalid annotations in them, the ingress nginx controller will no longer load them. But I'll also tell you about that in the logs. Um, you can, of course, disable this option, but we also came up with a sensitive set of validations. And so um, if your value doesn't match our validations, feel free to create an issue and let's talk about that. Yeah, regex is really fun. So we've already found one issue with one of the regexes um, on it. So yeah, um, but again, trying to protect from that CVE issue. Yeah, I can tell writing in a regular expression for URL, whew. At yeah. least it's not an email. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, next one is uh, the allow cross namespace resources option. So um, in the past, you could define a, a in, an ingress resource and uh, with annotations and inside these annotations, some of them require you to define a reference to like a config map or a secret and a secret that's uh, even more critical, especially if you're referencing it across several namespaces. And this option has been enabled in the past, so with 1.12 we decided to turn it off, and therefore you are now only able to reference secrets, config maps, whatever, in the same namespace. If you have valid reasons to still reference these resources outside, your namespace, like the namespace where you're creating the ingress resource in, then also, again, feel free to turn this option back on. The next one is the annotations risk level option. Um, so as I said before, we have some sensitive validation defaults for all our annotations, and with them, we also set a risk level. And um, before this minimum 
annotation risk level was set to critical, effectively meaning all annotations can be used. Now we lowered this level to high, which means critical annotations can no longer be used. Um, as an example, configuration snippets where you can just put in everything are normally critical. So again, if you feel like you still need um, configuration snippets inside annotations, um, this might hit you here and you might want to increase this level back to critical. Last but not least, um, there is a validation for what you're putting inside the path of uh, an uh, ingress rule. And normally, and most of the people would probably just put in a simple path, but also some are putting in regular expression there. Before and without this option being enabled by default, this was possible no matter which path type you're using. Right now, and with this option being enabled, we decided that you can only use regular expression, for example, in your path with the path type implementation specific, so no longer for um, uh, exact and prefix. Overall, and also noted at the end of these points, um, there are two CVEs which are related to these changes. And if you want to know a bit more about the CVEs, feel free to, uh, after the talk, um, uh, view it online. We are uploading it, and there you can also click the links to the CVEs or just enter them in your search engine. So, um, so this uh, regarding security changes. Um, with 112, we also deprecated and removed some features. First one is the global rate limiting feature. Um, this was used for having uh, rate limits across all your Ingress Engine exports synchronized in a central database. Since maintaining this feature means a lot of um, effort, we decided to drop it since we cannot um, come up with this effort and this um, support maintenance power at the moment. And also, just one of the ideas around these deprecations and removals and with our security things is we're trying to stay true to the Ingress API. Um, Ingress Nginx does a lot that is not inside of the Ingress API. We expose a lot of the Nginx configuration. And uh, that's why when you see the third-party Lua plugins uh, being removed, um, that's part of it. So just trying to stay true to the Ingress API. Yeah, exactly. Um, as already mentioned in our last talk in Paris, we uh, were about, and already did, drop the pod security policies. Uh, note on that, I think they were uh, removed from Kubernetes API in 125, so Kubernetes 125. And if you are still relying on them right now, I'm not sure if Ingress Nginx is responsible for that. Um, so we removed them because hopefully nobody really relies on them anymore right now. Um, another one on effort we would need to put into maintenance is uh, the S390X architecture. Um, so we had some uh, build failures in the past, mostly in the Nginx base image, um, mostly due to this architecture, and fixing them, whew, not a lot of fun. One of the other concerning issues with S390X is if you've ever looked at our build script, we have to lock specific versions of the Lua plugins that we use and some of the other technology and not being able to update those. So again, a security concern and also a build time concern. Uh, I think it's not fun waiting four hours for a build to fail. Um, yeah, and um, from an economical perspective, uh, just for comparison, if I remember correctly, building our controller or the engine, Nginx base image for uh, AMD um, normally takes like 20 to 30 minutes and uh, S390X takes one and a half hour in CI, which is not a lot of fun, especially if you have tests running and you want to uh, make sure it's building, compiling for all the architectures. Um, yeah, so next one is the open telemetry module installation image, complex, um, but easy to explain. So um, in the past, we had an image uh, you could use as an init container, and this would then copy over the pre-compiled Nginx 
um, open telemetry module into your container, and then you could use open telemetry. I think we already decided to uh, just build it into the Nginx base image in either version 1.10 or 1.11, but this module installation image was still around, even though it was not required. This is why we removed it for now. Another one um, about maintenance, but also just easier to have it into, uh, built into the Nginx base image. Last but not least, um, we removed, finally removed the ingress upstream latency seconds metric. This has been de deprecated uh, some time ago. And I think one user came up telling us that they are having performance issues with this metric. And since it has been deprecated a long time ago, we just told, okay, come on, let's remove it. It's fine. Also with 112, we'd like to add a note on multi-tenancy. Um, to sum it up, Ingress Engine X controller requires access to secrets, a lot of secrets. Normally, and by default, configured to have access to all secrets in your cluster because it needs this this access for the certificates, as certificates are also just secrets. This is one thing. Then. It normally has access to all your workloads, so network access, so you can freely set up your ingress resources. This already not very nice. Um, in addition and in um, combination with having a multi-tenancy setup where you may might not know all your users and customers or whatnot, which then come up with their user-defined ingresses and potentially insecure annotations, depending on how you configured your ingress controller, the one in your cluster, um, yeah, you might end up with privilege escalation. Not very nice. Um, this is one reason why we changed all the default values in the security section. But if this is still not enough for you, we uh, recommend you to maybe consider reading our documentation because there we have some details on this multi-tenancy setup, plus also a possible solution. Um, you can also just have multiple controllers installed into your cluster and um, have them separated by namespace and then also separated by tenants in the end. So one of the things that we talked about in Paris that we said we were going to start working on our gateway API implementation, we are no longer Ingress Nginx then. It's not just Ingress. Um, I really like this quote because I think it took us probably about a month going back and forth on what the name actually would be. And um, we have some, also in Paris, we gave out a survey for the community and they gave us a bunch of different names. Um, a lot of those, as you can see in the word cloud, you know, Nginx, Gateway, Gateway Nginx, um, Ginger, um, thank you, whoever put that, that was, you know, appreciated. Um, but the one that we decided to go with was Proxy with Proxy Face. <laughs> no, not really. Um, I don't think SIG Network would have liked Sadly. that one. <laughs> we went with Ingate, an Ingress and Gateway API controller. So with Gateway, did we? No, okay, never mind. I'm, That's your the slide. The slides are in my head, so they're not in the right order. Um, so with Gateway API, one of the things that we're looking to implement, again, we want to simplify and secure what we're trying to accomplish. And Ricardo right here has broken a lot of things for us, um, but he has finally actually gotten Nginx Go Crossplane working. So it's a new templating engine that we'll be using. Instead of doing it ourselves, you know, it would be inherent issues biases and regex issues that we have. This is actually from Nginx itself. So it's an upstream templating engine that we'll be using that will help us you know, fix some of the broken configs that would be possible. Um, we've talked about the control plane and data plane split. So as most of you are aware, the controller and the Nginx proxy are running in the same container, uh, in the same pod. That's an issue from a scalability perspective, from an from a access to resources perspective. Like we said, if the controller has access to all secrets, that means the Nginx proxy has access to all secrets. So we want to be able to, one, we need to do this for a gateway API to be able to deploy multiple Nginx proxies. So we have to do this split anyway. Um, I put Nginx here because 
Um, as some of you may or may not know, or all of you know, that we use, um, we compile Nginx ourselves. Um, that, again, goes back to the runtime issues that we've had. Um, we will attempt, I say attempt, to use um, uh, Nginx binary without having to compile it ourselves. Um, so that way we can upgrade faster. A lot of you may be aware we were on 120 for a very long time. We've just got up to 125. I think we're closer to 127. Um, we're testing that, but it takes a long time because we rely on Open Rusty. So Open Rusty has to support, their, their libraries have to support it, then we can support it. Um, because of all of the dynamic configuration, that's all done in Lua. Um, we're gonna talk about the project migration. Um, with that, I want to talk a little bit more about this. So we've been discussing it as a community since I think 2021. Um, that issue, again, that Ricardo put up there, asking the community about it, discussing it. We got a lot, a lot of thumbs up, a lot of happy faces. Um, that's great. Um, Fast forward to you know this year, we've been working on, you saw all of those changes, all of those changes were in response to security issues, so we have to take priority with those. So again, new features have to take a back seat to security and CVE issues. So we've been doing a lot of work with that, but we've been discussing a lot with SIG Network since Paris, what this would look like. Um, we presented this for the most part, to the Gateway API community meeting last week. If you want to watch, there's, some, there's the YouTube video for it, and then today is our presentation, and we're looking forward to 2025. Um, KubeCon NA will be our initial release, and if you're interested in helping with that, um, we're going to be starting that next week. But, it won't be a project rename. This will be a completely separate project set up in Kubernetes SIG. Um, we will be doing this from the ground up, so we'll be able to have architecture and design discussions. We'll be able to document those. So when folks ask us, why did you do X this way? We'll be able to point them to that documentation and have that, those discussions. We're even talking about, do we want to continue with like informers? Do we want to go to controller runtime? Are we going to have an operator to deploy Nginx? So there's lots of things that we have to discuss, both from a technology perspective, how we want to structure the project, um, and you know maybe S390X comes back into it, but I doubt that. So like I said, it's a brand new um, repo in Kubernetes SIG. Um, there are several variations and flavors of Gateway API. There's, as everyone knows, there's stable and experimental. And then inside stable, um, there's extended and core. We are, the initial support will be on core only, no extended APIs, nothing implementation specific, and no policies. Um, so we want to keep it, again, tightly scoped to the API implementation. We don't want to, um, the way I've been explaining is like repeat sins of the past. Um, allowing folks access to Nginx, to the core configuration, running, you know, uh, running Lua code wild. Um, one of the design decisions that we've already made, when that's not, to me, unless, uh, unless there's an actual technical reason, we're not going to be using Lua, so no dependency on Open Rusty. We are going to use another upstream project from Nginx, NJS. Um, so that will help us with the dynamic reloads of certificates and backends and things like that. We will have Ingress API support. Um, so the initial release will be on Gateway, and then we'll work towards helping folks migrate from Ingress Nginx to Gateway API. Um, if folks aren't aware, there is a project called Ingress to Gateway, and it has a provider structure, so we, we will help implement an Ingress Nginx provider that will allow folks to migrate to Gateway, and if they can't use Gateway, then we can use um, Ingress API. But again, it will be a subset of what you would expect from Ingress Nginx because we're not going to have 100 annotations. We're gonna scope it directly to what the Ingress API is. And if you want something like TCP routes, TLS pass-through, if it's implemented in Gateway API, that's where it would get implemented in Ingate. What that also means is running two projects at once is very difficult. It will go into, Ingress Nginx is going to go quote unquote maintenance mode. We'll be doing patches, CVE releases, and bug fixes only. So if you have a bug fix out there on the repository now, please come to the community uh, meeting that I think is next week and discuss yeah. those with us or hit us up in Slack so that we can get those into the next few um, things. That actually gets us into the conversation of, oh, 
One more slide. I'm talking on my slides again. Um, like we did with the name, we would like to get some ideas from the community about a logo. That was one of the things that I didn't like about Ingress and Nginx. It's a sub-project. It's not a CNCF project, so we don't, we don't you know, get to have a logo. I would like to have a logo and some stickers. Um, so if you guys have an idea, if you want to help with that, um, please um, upload or you know, share your image with this QR code. So what does that mean about Ingress Nginx releases? We'll let. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> um, exactly, what does this mean for Ingress Nginx? So um, uh, we are currently in the process of releasing 1.12. Um, that's it's, what it's we are. right now. Hmm? It's beta right now, just yeah. let everyone know. Right now there is a beta, um, and then the final 1.12 will come soon. Um, with 1.13, we will have the before-mentioned cross-plane um, configuration rendering uh, module uh, already merged, but by default it will be disabled. And with 1.14, we are planning to enable this by default. One of the caveats, and of course we'll have this in the release notes, is by enabling cross-plane, some of the annotations will not be available. Um, for security reasons and for we just it, it's not implemented in the library. So things like configuration snippets won't be supported. Yeah, but still, um, and even beyond that, we hopefully will provide Alpine updates, Nginx updates, Golang updates, um, CVE remediations, and of course, bug fixes. So this doesn't mean Ingress Nginx is completely dead, but as James already told, maintenance mode, um, we are trying to focus on Ingate, and so no new features should always be considered to be implemented in Ingate, while we still support Ingress Nginx by patching and fixing bugs and um, improving security. So, um, as you might have noted, this takes a lot of um, energy in the end, and probably more than just two and a half people. Um, <laughs> so if you feel like you want to get involved, uh, let's, let's say it's not just code. Um, so you don't need to be the best Golang um, uh, developer. It's also about documentation. Um, it's about um, examples for the different providers they are out there, cloud providers. And, uh, but it's also uh, JavaScript, for example. So as I said, not only Go code, but uh, also different and other uh, programming languages, uh, especially with the uh, NJS module, we hopefully um, get in Ingate. Um, apart from that, we are running on GitHub Actions, so um, the whole CI and E2E testing needs to be supported. And last but not least, uh, right now, uh, Long is doing this. Uh, a lot of issue work, so there's the GitHub issue tracker, and he's doing a great job about that, and hope, uh, will probably also be happy to get some support there. Uh, how can you get involved? We have uh, two channels on the Kubernetes Slack. One is the uh, Ingress Nginx dev channel. This is mostly meant for development and pull requests and contributions in the end. And we have our Ingress Nginx users channel. There you can, can ask any question around Ingress Nginx. Um, if you're new to contributing to open source, we also have a new contributor documentation online, and as James already mentioned, there is a community meeting every other Thursday, probably next Thursday, um, 11 Eastern time, and we are recording these meetings, so you can also watch them online on YouTube afterwards. And with that, that's, uh, that's our presentation. If you would be so kind as to review the presentation, let us know what you think. And the Gateway API community is interested in what folks are using Gateway API for, if they've migrated to it, what your uh, persona is for using Gateway API. So if you could complete the Gateway API survey for us, that would be really helpful. And with that, I don't know where we are with time. Um, we're open for questions. Awesome. No? No questions? Great. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>